Hello everyone, welcome to a very quick stock market outlook for the week of March 13th. Overall, conditions have deteriorated. I go through this process every week of looking at overall market conditions, and that's basically the start of my swing trading process. Is it good to be even taking trades at all? And right now, I have decided to not be taking any trades until conditions improve again. So we'll talk about why they've deteriorated and what they would need to improve. I did, uh, or this will be updated very shortly. There are a couple stocks that I kind of have my eye on a little bit, but with the market conditions as they are, I would not be taking any trades until we start to see some improvement. A couple trades recently worked out uh, overall as, as a group, a little bit of profit, but over the last few weeks there have been very few trades that I had setups for that actually triggered. So overall, uh, yeah, it's been a pretty uh, quiet market coming into this, so not too much heavy exposure uh, if you kind of follow my methods. And so this downturn should mostly have been avoided, I would think. And yeah, so let's get to what is happening. This is just a overall view of a few different markets. We have the NASDAQ 100, the S&P 500, the uh, Canadian index, uh, the Russell 2000 small cap stocks, the NYSE composite, which is the most comprehensive uh, index on uh, this page. And we can see we are heading rapidly back toward these late 2022, early 2023 lows uh, after making a higher swing high. So we had the uptrend going in all these indices, higher highs versus uh, late 2022. You can see higher highs. And that is now going to be in jeopardy in all of these. If we get back to these lows, it doesn't mean that we can't, you know, turn around and head higher right again, but from a kind of risk reward perspective, I'll usually back off and wait for the trend. So we can see this not good on the NYSE composite, the most comprehensive, as I mentioned, and we are right back to prior lows. So if we are trend traders, can we call this an uptrend anymore? not in my books at least it's very much in conflict um, because now we've all come all the way back to the lows so you have you have selling strength here matching the buying strength that pushed it up uh, and the sell-off was a little quicker so this to me just it doesn't say buyers are in control anymore they've they've been able to push it all the way back so from a price action perspective this just tells me to back off until we have more clearly defined trends. Uh, yeah, the French index I threw on there just for interest. It is, you know, still holding up actually quite well compared to all these other indices and yeah, one of the best performing indices in the world right now. Horrible health indicators all around. You can see only about 16% of the S&P 500 is above its 50-day moving average. 23% of all U.S. stocks are above their 50-day moving average. That is just a very crude measure of how many stocks are in uptrends. A lot easier to make money when you're buying and stocks are in uptrends. Right now, very few are, so it's going to be tougher to make money uh, on the long side. So this horrible volume, not really important to me at the moment, my cutoff is usually 2%. Uh, this is daily percentage movement on the S&P. 2% drops are more indicative of downtrending market behavior. And we've had a whole bunch right on the cusp. Three last week, not quite over 2%, but you know that is not good. That is more downtrending behavior as opposed to uptrending behavior where we have very small movement each day and we generally do not get these big intraday drops or single day drops. So this also bad. This one, I didn't put a thumbs down on it. We are trending lower, but it is holding up a little bit better actually than the S&P 500. Uh, you know, we've dropped below this point and that would be this point on the NYC, and we're just holding a little bit above it. So it's actually holding up a tiny bit better than the NYSE is. NYSE. 
than the S&P 500 is. And this is the NYSE advanced decline line, and it is holding up a little bit better than the S&P 500, but it is still trending lower, so it, it's not good either. This also a thumbs down. We had a 90% downside day, or you could think of it a different way as it's shown on this chart is a uh, less than 10% upside day. That means less than 10% of the volume that occurred on the NYSE was in stocks that were moving up uh, on the New York Stock Exchange. That is a very uh, bearish type tone uh, where pretty much all the volume going through is uh, in stocks that are dropping. So ugly. Let's look at the sectors on the move, and this pretty much tells the story of why we should be staying out at the moment. Everything in the red, nothing really holding up well at all last week, uh, or even over the last month now, all those gains erased. If we look at all three of these time frames, there are a couple that are in the upper half on all three. We have industrials, energy, uh, and technology. So technology the best performer over the last three months, industrials, second energy in the top sort of area there as well. Uh, consumer cyclicals top over the three months but it's down near the bottom of the one week and one month performance. So very few things holding up well at the moment. So technology, industrials, energy, but again uh, this is not an environment I want to be buying in. So until conditions start to improve, what would that mean? Basically, all these things have to start moving up. We need this to move back above the 50. We need these to get back to small levels. We can't have be having 2% drops and uh, be expecting to make a lot of money on the upside. We need these to start quieting down, which is more indicative of upturning behavior. We need this to start trending back up. We need to see this move out. Ideally, we see a 90% upside day. Uh, or two 80% days back to back that would show some uh, strong buying coming in back into the market. So basically once these reverse and move back into the uh, flip side of the yeah what they're doing now they're really negative right now we need to see those move back into positive territory. So what will I be doing this week? Probably just relaxing. Until those conditions turn favorable again, no uh, long swing trades for me. I day trade stocks and Forex, and that's the nice thing about day trading is that there's always something to trade every day, whereas with swing trading, we definitely have these periods of action followed by sometimes long periods of inaction. So if you're interested in day trading, you can check out the methods there. So that's it for this week. Uh, stay safe out there.